<clears throat> so today I will be talking about The Rise of Skywalker, which uh, I saw in theaters for vlog number one. So um, in order to talk about um, myth and ritual in The Rise of Skywalker, I would argue that you have to uh, talk about the other two movies as well. Um, the R Rise of the Four, or what is the first one called? Force Awakens, yeah, that's one. The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, because um, one of the one of the ritual elements within this movie, within these movies, uh, for Rey is the hero's journey, and I would really argue that she doesn't complete the hero's journey um, until the end of the Rise of Skywalker. So, starting off in The Force Awakens her first call to action like the, the, her first call to adventure would be when bb8 uh intercepts her or bumps into her in the market and she meets finn because finn is being searched for he's being searched for by the stormtroopers since he escaped since he was a stormtrooper himself so that's the first like call to adventure call to action and um ray cross crosses the threshold in that film when they have to steal the millennium falcon and uh, escape from the TIE Fighters that way. Uh, <coughs> Rey actually had um, a bunch of mentors throughout her hero's journey, and like also no mentors. She, she sort of like figured it out on her own because in the first movie, um, there was really no one like that mentored her in her hero's journey aspect. The, 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 the closest thing that would come to that would be Han Solo in that movie but he was sort of um more like begrudging in that movie and in, 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 like to be her her mentor because she stole the millennium falcon so he didn't really like that um then in the next movie in in the last jedi luke wasn't really he had sort of become disenfranchised with uh the jedi as like a concept after he had failed to train ben solo so he didn't really uh, want to mentor her in the traditional sense, sort of like how Obi-Wan or Yoda mentored him in the original trilogy. So she really sort of just figured it out um, on her own. Like her mentor would have really been Kylo Ren, where they both sort of played off of each other. And they're, they're, both of their um, hero's journeys and their character evolutions were very intertwined with each other. So throughout the three trilogies, I would argue that Kylo Ren is uh, Rey's biggest mentor because she discovers most of her force powers through uh, interactions, conflicts, or like head-to-head, um, -head, like like di like differences with Kylo Ren specifically. Um, for the abyss portion of the hero's journey, uh, it would that would probably be when Rey is on the island with Luke and she stares into like the like physical literal abyss that's on the island, how it's meant to parallel the cave on Dagobah in uh, The Empire Strikes Back, where Luke has to face his fears in, the, in that cave where Yoda tells him. That would be like the abyss moment for, uh, for Rey. And then uh, the transformation moment for Rey would be during The Last Jedi when Rey is telling Luke that they need to go and they need to like defeat Kylo Ren, like they can attack uh, they can like attack the supreme leader snoke and like they can put an end to the war because ray firmly believes that luke in all his like jedi wisdom and power can be a great asset to them in the war but luke himself he says oh what do you think i'm gonna do Just stare uh stare down the entire first order with a laser sword so uh ray's transformation would be when she finally decides to just like get off her ass and go fight the the first order and like kylo ren and try and save the resistance when they're holed up on like the the salt planet and then finally um sort of like the climax of the hero's journey for ray would be when she kills palpatine in um the rise of skywalker so palpatine the entire time is telling her to uh use her anger and her frustration to kill him so that she'll finally uh, replace him on the dark side of the force and while Rey does do this she does kill him it's not out of like anger or vengeance it's more out of uh, honor for like the Jedi and for Luke and for all the comrades that they lost along the way such as Leia and Han so it's more of a um, it's more of like a, a an amalgamation of the light and the dark side because in the previous movies we have we've learned that um, the light side is too restrictive and it leads to Darth Vader and we've also learned that the dark side um, you it's sort of you can't get anything done 
if you're always acting in fear of the dark side. So in Rey's hero's journey, she finally sort of... Uh, the culmination of her entire journey would be when she kills Palpatine without falling to the dark side. She's not. She doesn't have to turn evil like Palpatine says she will once once she strikes him down she's able to like kill him and rid the galaxy of him and restore balance and the return and the gift of the goddess would be in the last scene where um ray returns to tatooine and they ask her who she is and she says her name is ray skywalker so really um the actual myth and ritual elements within the film itself and not just ray's character arc over the three movies in the trilogy um one of the one of the like religious uh connections that you can make in the rise of skywalker would be ben solo or kylo ren's character where um he sort of parallels like the sort of like jesus christ or the god of vegetation where he fell from grace and he turned to the dark side and he uh joined the first order when he was originally part of luke's new jedi academy but then by the third by the second movie he actually um kills the supreme leader snoke to sort of like take control of the first order and just have him and ray like rule the galaxy together but then by the end of the third movie he sa actually sacrifices himself to restore balance to the force in a similar way or almost exactly how darth vader does it in return of the jedi at the end so in the same way that um darth vader could have been seen as an allegory to jesus christ or the god of vegetation whereas with his death the force is back in balance kylo ren can also be seen in the same exact way and that concludes my analysis of the myth and ritual in the rise of skywalker hope you guys enjoyed thank you